Clemson's grand entrance into Memorial Stadium gives you a little sense of normalcy, but when you look around, it still feels different. Capacity in this 80,000-seat cathedral capped at 19,000 today. Social distancing in effect and calls for social justice on the field visible to the naked eye. From Death Valley, you're watching the ACC on ESPN, and you're about to watch the number one team in the country, the Clemson Tigers, against the Citadel out of Charleston, South Carolina. Anish Shroff alongside Tom Luganbill, Eric Wood will be with us in just a few moments. We've said it many times this year, no GPS to get through a pandemic, but Clemson in this climate has some built-in advantages. That's the case when you build your program on the scaffold of culture. Yeah, culture is an often overused cliche, but not when it comes to the Clemson Tigers. Really, the foundation of this program, Anish, is as much about people as it is about players. It's the reason why redshirt freshmen and sophomores don't transfer out if they're not playing right away. It's the reason why players that are eligible for the NFL draft, they decide to come back. So when you have that type of environment, it galvanizes you as a football team and prepares you for a pandemic and a football season like this. Travis Etienne could have gone pro. Yep. Trevor Lawrence could have opted out. Instead, they return. And those are two pretty good pieces to start with. Well, Trevor Lawrence, you know, you, you come on the scene as a true freshman. You're just trying to earn the respect of your players and your coaches. And then, you know what? You won a national championship. You follow the next year. Now you are the unquestioned leader of the offense. In 2020, Trevor Lawrence is the unquestioned leader of the university, the community here at Clemson. And then at running back, Travis Etienne has built himself into the complete back. He burst on the scene as a true freshman. Everybody was kind of surprised by him. He was a late take in their recruiting class as a runner, as a pass catcher, as a pass protector. He's the type of back now that never has to come off the field, and you had better know where he's lining up on each and every play. Those are two names all college football fans know. There's a couple on that Clemson D-line that everyone will know pretty soon. Yeah, we got a couple of man-children, if you will, for Clemson, and it's kind of just the norm. Last week against Wake Forest, you've got Brian Brissy, you've got Miles Murphy, two players in the top seven of the ESPN 300 a year ago, not only make their mark, but literally create havoc in their first game as a Power 5 football player. So what we're seeing is along the defensive front, in the front seven as a whole, Clemson reloads, they don't rebuild. Clemson won the opening toss, and they will receive... Tom, you and I have done a lot of games over the years at Memorial Stadium. Looking around and seeing empty seats, it's loud right now. It feels different. It feels strange. It's loud, but you've got to really be impressed with how everybody's seated. Very responsible fans here at Clemson. Well, let's check in with Eric Wood. Clemson replaces four out of five starters across their offensive line. Jackson Carmen being the only returner. The last time they did that was 2015. That year, all five starters made an all-conference team, and they made an appearance in the national championship game. They would love that type of production from their offensive line this season. I tell you what, he would. It's an offensive lineman's dream. You've got triple option wishbone football. You've got some new faces along the Clemson front. Can't wait to talk to you about this position today with two vastly different approaches. Well, the Citadel quick kicked before the ball was actually put in play, so they'll have to re-kick. Citadel a little antsy here on the road in their second contest. One of 15 FCS teams taking the field in the fall. One of four in the SoCon. Sky kicks. Some confusion as to who was going to catch it. And Clemson will take over near its own 20-yard line. 
Well, what, what, what more can you say about Trevor Lawrence? He's going to be the number one pick in the NFL draft. He's only lost one game as a starter. But this offseason, we saw him become a leader, as you mentioned, not just for this program, but he became the leader of college football, redefining what it is to be a student athlete in the modern age. He's become a voice in our society over the last four to five months, a force for good, and somebody that student athletes, whether it's college football or anybody else, can look to as a guy that's doing it right. A unifying voice. Absolutely. On first down, the give is to the two-time ACC Player of the Year, Travis Etienne. Only picked up a yard, second and nine. Well, it's interesting. Ultimately, this is what Clemson wants to be in East. They want to run the football. Even though they're up-tempo, they look like they're spread. They're a power-run football team. Beats the end of the edge. Turns it upfield. He's got midfield plus territory. And you got a glimpse of why that young man averages eight yards per carry for his career. Well, they got him. They got him on the perimeter where they want him with an unblocked defender. And he's responsible for making that man miss. That's Destin Mack, number seven right there. Number 25, Sean Thomas Faulkner, the safety, runs him down. But you expect great plays in space against unblocked defenders. Turn a five-yard run into a 40-yard game. From the 44, Lawrence throws, and it's dropped by Amari Rodgers. That's going to be a little bit of a new role for Rodgers this year. We're used to seeing him on those bubble and tunnel screens. He'll go vertical a little more. Well, and he was everywhere a week ago versus Wake Forest. Really became the go-to guy. As to your point, we had become accustomed to seeing him be more of a slot, but he is going to attack the field everywhere. A really rare drop there for Amari Rodgers. Lynn J. Dixon back in the lineup after being held out for precautionary reasons last week. Had a preseason knee injury. He's the number two back, and it sets up third down from the 40. A lot of depth at running back for Clemson. You know, you just mentioned Lynn J. Dixon, of course, the true freshman, Demarcus Bowman. We're going to see a lot of him today. This is a very, very talented backfield, but not as experienced when you get past the 2D. A lot of depth in a lot of places for Clemson. <laughs> Has become the norm. Lawrence with time over the middle and complete. A first down catch by Cornell Powell, a fifth-year senior who has really opened the eyes of this coaching staff in the offseason. They've had a lot of respect for him because he's hung in there during his career, and it's paying off now. It's such a clean pocket here. You see Trevor Lawrence work from his right to his left, very poised, delivers a strike. Cornell Powell, big, big catch over the middle. Out of the backfield to ETN. And ETN... Picks up a first down with the yards after the catch. That was the element he added last season. Yeah, I think that's what makes him so dangerous is you can line him up anywhere on the field and you have to account for him. That time, even though he's in the backfield, the moment he swings out, he is now a viable option. That wasn't the case his first year. Last year, he morphed into that. Now he's going to perfect it in 2020. Strong opening drive continues for Clemson. Now a red zone opportunity. Lawrence looking for six. Nearly intercepted, but it's caught for a touchdown. Frank Lanson, the sophomore from Miami. It's a little bit of patience here from Trevor Lawrence. That, that ball's got to be completed between 17 and 22 yards or so. And you're going to see that's exactly what it does. And, and unfortunately for the Citadel, Destin Mack, he thinks he's got a pass break up here. And Latson, the sophomore, the true sophomore, heralded receiver out of last year's class that we're hoping becomes that go-to downfield threat coming up with a big catch here on the first drive. No T. Higgins. He's in the NFL. No Justin Ross out for the season with a spinal injury. So one of the questions for Clemson, who is that outside receiver that can stretch the field? We may not know his name just yet, at least nationally. Yep. He's on the roster. He is on the roster. There is a wealth of talent and size. We know they've got length at the receiver position. They just need a little more experience for somebody to take that next step, take the reins of this group. is good by P.T. Potter. 
Mid-season form for the Tigers on that opening drive. Didn't take long for the Tigers. Efficient, productive, and a strike for Trevor Lawrence. The sophomore, Frank Gladson, first touchdown of the season. Dabo Sweeney, now one of the deans of college football coaches, he told us culture has been the foundation of success at Clemson, and in this climate, culture is going to be a bigger advantage than it has ever been before. So when his kids went away from campus and then came back, they all looked at each other and said, hey, I know you, you're my pal, let's hang out, and it just, it just put this group back into their normalcy. I like what they said about disagreeing respectfully. That's what they learned to do, and that has been unifying. We can all learn from that. Food Lions, food for thought. We're going to see the Citadel and their option offense, Luke. Yeah, the quarterback, Brandon Rainey, is going to be a runner first, passer second, and then your traditional wishbone wish or triple option looks. Your B-back's going to be your fullback. Your two A-backs are going to be your halfback, tailback types, and those are going to be guys that you're going to have to deal with on the perimeter in terms of the pitch. And then Raleigh Webb, really the best athlete and the fastest player on this offense, but he plays wide receiver a week ago against South Florida, had to create some plays in the reverse game for him to get involved. Brendan Rainey, the quarterback, will keep it, and he is dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Hello, Clemson defensive line. Well, one of the first things uh, I said to Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator, and we're going to find out if those young bucks can play and stay off the ground. In the, in the option scheme, you're going to have a lot of low blocks aimed at the knee, below the knee, and you've got to be able to play on your feet. And so that's going to be something new for some of these young guys. You see Brian Brissett, number 11, right there. Very productive week a week ago along with Miles Murphy, the other true freshman. Give is to the fullback, Amike and Wanje. He is the B-back. It sets up third and long. And this is a team that is short-handed in the backfield. Brent Thompson telling us the starting two A-backs, those are the slot backs. Opted out for the fall. They're down their top two B-backs this week, so a lot is going to fall on Brent Thompson's quarterback, Brendan Rainey, who was one of the better QBs in the FCS last year. And he is now their third team B-back in case they get into a real emergency. So only 63 scholarship players at the FCS level. So Brent Thompson, that man right there, has had to deal with an awful lot here in the first couple of weeks. The option to the outside, and nothing going on for Keith White. He's short of the first down. It'll bring up fourth and two. Don't be terribly surprised, though, if the offense stays out on the field, and it appears they will. I kind of wish they would have come up with that play on second down because this is the line to gain that you want to be in traditionally to have a shot to maintain possession of the ball when you're going to be in a triple option run heavy scheme, and it looks like they're changing their mind, Anish. So we get to see Matt. Matt Campbell, the punter, number 90, he went viral last week for all the wrong reasons. Had some trouble with a punt in the end zone. Finally got it away. It went for zero yards, and it was caught by a South Florida player in the end zone for a touchdown. A zero-yard touchdown. Yeah. Got a little redemption, though, with a therapy session with Pat McAfee on game day. The flag is down. Amari Rogers turns the corner. And bumped out shy of midfield. Jeff Flanagan, our head of referee today. Illegal formation. Offense. Five men in the backfield. Five yard penalty will be added on to the end of the run. First down. So last week against South Florida, this was the series of unfortunate events for Matt Campbell. We'll just take the safety, right? Nope. Yeah. And as you can people. imagine, kickers are people too. Punters are people too. <laughs> as you can imagine, Instagram, Twitter, social media had a field day with that one. After the penalty, Clemson starts in Bulldog territory. Lynn J. Dixon cuts a jagged path to the 44, flag down. Offside. 
is five yards. First down. Hassan Black, the sophomore from Wyoming, Ohio. Well, one of the things you can't do when you're out, man, and you're on the road is help them out. You got a penalty following that last punt, added another five yards, and now you give them five yards and the down over. Off play action, Lawrence down the seam, wants Rodgers, touchdown! See Javante Middleton, the corner, number 33, matched up against Rodgers. And this just takes too long. You cannot give Trevor Lawrence that much time. A beautiful overarching throw. Led Rodgers across the middle of the field. No danger. Just let him run underneath it. Wow. A little redemption for Rodgers, who in a similar spot in the end zone dropped the touchdown last week against Wake Forest. And you got to feel for the DB Middleton making his first career start in place of Jay Howard. Amari Rodgers, more than just a bubble guy. He can go deep. Clemson rolling early. ACC Network Football is brought to you by Zaxby's. Hand-breaded chicken and fresh ingredients made to order only at Zaxby's. Clemson using social distancing measures in the stands. Where the fans are sitting, they're sitting on orange cushions, orange chairs, six feet apart. So if you bought four tickets for your family, you get to sit together and you have a little bit of room. It's not easy to get this configuration right. They've done a good job with operations here at Death Valley. Yeah, and the fans have been responsible. When you take a look at the stadium here, they haven't gotten up and congregated. They've been accountable for realizing that if we want football to continue, we got to do our part. Players and coaches have done their part. University's done their part. Now we got to do ours. Eric Wood is down on the field. Eric, the noise isn't as loud as it usually is, but they've got some artificial sound from some unique places coming in. Yes, they do. They're using Madden. 2020 sounds and it is loud down here between the band the 19 20,000 fans and, and all the sound effects it feels like a great game day environment down here a flag down already the penalties adding up for the yeah. citadel ball starts offense number 22 five yard penalty first down now raleigh webb their top receiver Now, this offense saw six players opt out from the running back position. They had a very highly touted VMI transfer, Alex Ramsey, a 1,300-yard rusher. He opted out. Now he's entered the transfer portal. Rainey, who garnered some All-America honors last year, gets close to the original line of scrimmage, second and long. You know, as I mentioned, you're only at 63 scholarship players. So when you have opt-outs, you have injuries, you have the world of coronavirus, it's almost impossible to recover from that, particularly in a short period of time. And Eric, when you're in an offense like this that is so nuanced in the details, you're asking an awful lot of young, inexperienced players. Yeah, absolutely. It's extremely tough. When you have a guy flipping from the defensive side of the football and he becomes your main b and Loden Brock, that is an entirely uh, difficult situation for him. Brandon Rainey completes on his first pass attempt. Keontae Sessions, the senior from Myrtle Beach, and a first down, and that's big for this Citadel offense. 
Now, they had some long drives against Alabama and Clemson three years ago. Well, Brent Venables for Clemson, the defensive coordinator, was really worried about their play action. He said of, of the triple option teams we face, they play action the most. If you get caught peeking in the backfield, we're going to be in trouble, and that happened that time in the secondary for Clemson. That's on. It's the dive. A short gain and a flag at the end of the play. Personal foul. Illegal block the other way. Number 87. 15 yard penalty. Looks down. In this offense, you have these low blocks, these cut blocks, but from the backside when you have them, you can get caught up with another teammate. Now you got yourself a penalty. Yeah, you got to be on the same page because if one of the guys stays up and gets his hand on him up high and the other guy chops his leg out, that's a penalty all day long, and it's a great job by the officials there enforcing it early because those are the situations when guys can get seriously injured. Yeah, and it was, you know, that time it was against Niles Pinckney, number 44, and again, Anisha, a great play on the ground, then you, you know, complement it with a pass through the air, you're in good shape, and now you're first and 25. And when you're an option offense and you get into these quote-unquote passing downs, yeah. it sets you back, it limits your options. There's the pitch, it's Wallace, and he gets bulldozed at about the 24-yard line. <laughs> Big Balin Specter, the graduate, 6'2", 230 pounds. Watch him come from across the field, opposite, number 10, and he runs this thing down. You're going to see him there right in the middle of your screen. Watch his angle. He steps, and he gets right downhill, avoids the second-level block, and boom! Injured player. Might see a few Tweety Birds right there. The Bulldogs might be able to cut and read some of these D linemen, but can they avoid these Clemson linebackers? That's part two of a very difficult equation to solve. Yeah, if you if you don't get the defensive lineman on the ground, and then you certainly don't have an opportunity, if that's not your assignment, to get up to the second level and take care of the linebackers, you're going to have too many orange jerseys flowing freely to the football. Tell you what, guys, watching Clemson film over the years, one thing that has always impressed me is how Brett Venables gets entire buy-in from all of his defensive players. They fly around to the football for 60 minutes. He gets these top recruits that come up from all over the country. They come to Clemson, all of a sudden, they're the hardest working guys in the field each and every Saturday. It's amazing to me. Tigers showing pressure. Rainey to throw in trouble and ran into a sea of orange. It'll bring up third and long. Nowhere to go with the football that time, and pocket just collapsing. There's just such a size and strength discrepancy between the wealth of depth that that man Brent Venables has along his defensive front with the likes of Jordan Williams, K.J. Henry, Justin Maskell. We talked about the true freshmen, and then this offensive line that's not accustomed to being in pass protection mode. And here we are, third and 26. I call that third, and I don't have a play. Clemson, by the way, thin on the defensive line. No Tyler Davis, no Justin Foster. Mario Goodrich still out. Ball on the ground. And the punting team will come on. They do get Darion Kendrick back, though, in the secondary. He was out last week against Wake Forest. It's almost become comical, though, with Clemson. All right, the first stringer's out. You go down the list to the two and three, and it's a top 150 guy in a high school. It's a four-star guy. It's a five-star guy. It's just an infinite treasure trove of riches for Dabo Sweeney right now. Oh, and they're all at value premium positions. We're not talking about wide receivers or safeties. We're talking about defensive linemen. Those guys aren't growing on trees. A chance for Rodgers from the 39. He's got midfield, still dancing. And Clemson again with outstanding starting field position at the Citadel 45. Two drives, two TDs for Clemson, Trevor Lawrence and company. Back on the attack after this. You're looking at the best quarterback in college football, the best player in college football. Four for five today. 
Remember when he threw all those interceptions the first half of last year? He has now gone nine-plus games without an INT. Hey, listen, you know, priority number one, take care of the football. If you throw it to the other team, it doesn't matter how talented you are. This guy takes care of the ball. Hunter Rayburn, one of the backup O-linemen, can play center and guard. I believe that was actually on 62 Cade Stewart, which is unlikely a uh, mistake for him as a senior. ETN has an opening and tripped up from behind. Nice tackle in space by Chris Beverly, the all-conference safety. Chris Beverly and Marquise Blunt, number 49, who missed most of last year but is an impact player. Between Marquise Blunt and the FCS level All-American Willie Eubanks, this is actually a really talented uh, linebacking core for the Citadel. The defensive front, though, is tasked with keeping these big bodies from Clemson off of those guys. Lawrence, quick release. He's got Labson, who caught that first touchdown, and another first down. You know, Eric, we talk about, you know, however many consecutive throws Trevor Lawrence has without an interception. Look at where that ball placement was. He throws this ball on the back shoulder, really on the back hip. So there's no danger of anything bad happening. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Trevor Lawrence is so accurate. You mentioned starting after the first four games last year, he's been so accurate. I mean, got to be a surefire lock for the number one pick this year. He just has all the tools. It's the end of the 26, and his running back, I don't think gets enough credit. He's not just maybe the best running back in the history of this program. Certainly, C.J. Spiller has a lot of fans. ETN, if he duplicates his numbers from the last two years, he's going to go down as maybe the best back in the history of this conference. Well, and think about how many games he wasn't the feature player in some of the third and fourth quarters. Lawrence, plenty of time. And completes to the talented freshman E.J. Williams, who is from the same high school of Justin Ross in Phoenix City, Alabama. Yeah, Clemson's had some, they've had some success in Alabama. Justin Ross was the number one ranked player out of the state of, of Alabama two years ago. This is, again, you talked about the depth and the wealth of talent at wide receiver. We just don't know which one of those guys are going to become the go-to playmakers just yet. We're going to find out. ATN, first down and more inside the 10, down to the five, first and goal, Clemson. One of the things that I really like about this guy is he's very decisive. He's a slasher. So once he gets that ball, he's going to slash through and he stab, put his foot and get north. And then the balance off of the leap upon contact gets him another four to five yards. And Lugs, Clemson almost impossible to defend here because you've got to account for the quarterback run game. Absolutely. ETN stopped a little short. Nobody in the FBS with more touchdowns that's playing right now than Travis Etienne. Look at Clemson going a little up-tempo here, trying to catch Citadel off guard. And again, keep an eye on the quarterback. They love the quarterback run game down here. Etienne stood up in his tracks again. There was Marquise Blunt. It's third and goal. On the first down play, I actually thought it was a great opportunity for Lawrence to keep it. On this one, they take away both ETN and Trevor Lawrence gets his legs taken out. That was a dangerous play with your future NFL quarterback back there. Yeah, Eric, it'll be interesting to see if they decide, because they do have some one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside. You see Frank Latson, number two, to the top of your screen. That's a mismatch up there for a nice fade, or maybe a throwback to the shoulder. Two tight ends into the game. Lawrence, quarterback, keeper, and in for six. Third rushing touchdown of the season for the junior. Smart.
marks the fourth straight game that Trevor Lawrence has a TD on the ground. And this time, look, look, look at a little bit of that push, a little, little lower body strength hitting the squat rack. Everybody's on that Peloton craze in the offseason. Not Trevor. Trevor doesn't need to lose weight, he needs to gain weight. Tone up, too. We remember what happened against Ohio State, the play that turned to the semifinal game. It was Lawrence and his legs. I had an opportunity to sit down and do some television after this game with now BC head coach Jeff Hafley. And he said in preparation for this game, they went back as a staff, and over the entire year, they could only find a handful of plays where Trevor Lawrence was utilized as a designated runner. And once they didn't have an answer for it, that was like chum in the water and Clemson was fishing. I remember when Lawrence was a freshman, before he was even the starter, it was still Kelly Bryant's team, mm -hmm. we were at a Clemson practice in their indoor facility, and an NFL scout is watching the second team with Lawrence and jokes to us, and he says, see that kid who hasn't played a game yet or hasn't started a game yet? I'd take him with the number one pick right now. <laughs> got tremendous upside. I think that's the thing. When he came in, yes, he was physically gifted, but there was a lot of physical and mental development still to be had, so you really like to see Three drives, three touchdowns for the Tigers who look like they have not missed a beat. Tonight, ACC Network primetime game, Wake Forest and NC State. The Deeks have won three straight against the Wolfpack. Devin Leary, who finished last year as NC State starting quarterback, will get the opening day nod. Good trivia question here. Given all the NFL quarterbacks NC State has had, especially since 2000, how many 10-win seasons do you think the Wolfpack have in program history? Well, it's not fair to ask me that question because you already told me the answer, but it is a startling number. One. One. 2002 when Phillip Rivers was there. Option dangerous. Ball is out. Picked up by Clemson. Touchdown, Skalski. He's going to get the credit for the touchdown, but watch number 98, Miles Murphy, the true freshman. Number one, watch him slow play this. Then he puts his, it goes right underneath the blocker. He not only makes the tackle, gets the strip fumble, creates the opportunity for Scalzi to scoop and score. But for a young player to have the patience, he kept his shoulders square. He could always come back inside, or he could turn and run with the pitch. You just don't see a lot of that out of young kids. Uh, they are looking at that last play. But but clearly, ball was out well before Cooper Wallace hit the ground. Not a bad start for Miles Murphy, huh, to his young career? Not a bad start at all. See him 98 there, right on the right. He slips right underneath the back, creates the tag. Ooh, well, that's going to be close. That knee, we'll see if that ball's coming out as the knee hits the ground. But focus on 98. See, now, I didn't think he really had possession there in the he first may not place. Have right there, you're right. Let's see if they... I think, I think that's going to stand, Anish. I'm with you. Ruling on the field was a fumble recovered for a touchdown. And, again, you, you have to rule now where does he establish possession. Watching that, I think you can make a case he never really he never established does. possession. Well, look at the hand on the ball. The hand on the ball from Miles Murphy present, prevents him from actually maintaining possession of the football right here. Lose. I'm not sure he ever controlled it. Yeah. And because of the hand of Miles Murphy, right there, he hasn't had a chance to tuck that football. Wow, what a play by the youngster. 13th ranked overall player in the ESPN 300 a year ago. The ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. That would have been hard to overturn. So a defensive touchdown, and uh, this has escalated quickly. It certainly has. Many people expected it to. What I didn't expect, though, and Eric, I don't know how surprised you are by this, I didn't think the Citadel on offense would make as many mistakes as they've made to this point. Yeah, they're so disciplined year after year. But when you mentioned that they had six opt-outs, it's just so tough to get them ready for the season to execute without making many mistakes. Last week, they had a turnover on their first drive of the game, something you 
just do not generally see from a Citadel team. But like I said, with all the opt-outs this year, it's left them in a tough position. Now, this is a team that relies almost exclusively on running the ball. Yep. With a minute 51 to go in the quarter, negative rushing yards for the Citadel. Negative rushing yards. And, and listen, to Eric's point there, when the younger you are and the least experienced you are, the more mental errors you're likely to make. You couple that with the fact that you are so outmanned athletically that it's difficult to execute on any given play. Knowing the Bulldogs, the cadets, the daily discipline that they exhibit each and every day, the one thing you won't have out of this team is you won't have any quit. This team has played well. They've beaten Power 5 teams before. They know what this environment's all about. Beat Georgia Tech last year. A couple of years ago, they went to Tuscaloosa against what was then a number one Alabama team and had college football on the edge. Yes. They were tied at halftime with number one Alabama at 10. Short kick fielded by Jalen Adams, who also doubles as the backup quarterback, and he's taken down well shy of the 20. Extra yard for Teachers Week is an annual effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation to bring college football together to support and celebrate teachers across the country. Thanks to the College Football Playoff, ESPN is honored to donate $20,000 this week to help support teachers and their students. To learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers, follow at CFP Extra Yard. Certainly our gratitude goes out to teachers, especially now. I've got two in my family, two sisters-in-law, yeah. Nicole Malecki, Kristen Schroff. Bless them. Bless their hearts. Listen, it's, it should be 10 yards for teachers. I'm making an amendment the last six months and what they've had to do. And now with virtual learning. Oof. Keontae Sessions, and he is driven down. Uh, this Clemson defense right now is Nolan Turner makes the tackle from the safety position. Uh, they're having no problem reading this option offense. And as we said earlier, you got a feel for the Citadel. Yep. Two projected starting slot backs both opted out. They're on their third string B back, full back, because of injury. It's tough right now. You got inexperience in the backfield. On the back, back up to that B back, and you need more than one of them, is a converted former walk on that has never played a down of football at the Citadel. Number 46, Donnie Brechtel. He's already played here today. So just outmanned for a variety of reasons on offense for the Citadel. Death Valley, number one Clemson. Welcome to college football. Rainey into the embrace of Miles Murphy once again. Only the first quarter we've called his name quite a bit. Well, the reason why I like that, Eric, when, when we talked to Brenton Venables, he talked about the backside pursuit. We've got to stay on our feet on the backside so we can fill the lane and make the tackle. That's exactly what Miles Murphy did right there. Yeah, I know Brent Venables is super proud of his guy so far because one thing he was worried about is they stretch you so far laterally on the front side because you have to respect the option. If they cut you down on the backside, there's huge holes going up the middle. When we talked to Luke Conti, that's exactly what he said, the offensive coordinator for the Citadel. We need to attack them vertically, try and get to them where they're exposing gaps. Well, so far, there's been no gaps. This Clemson defense has been extremely disciplined in defending the option. Rainey in trouble, and down he goes. Want to take a guess? Does he wear 98? Five-yard penalty, third down. Big 98. The game clock to eight seconds. Premier player at a premium position, a, a future star. This is such a deep defensive front, so when, when you consider coming into Clemson as a true freshman... Well, they called a delay of game, so technically that's not going to count. Yeah, that, that play is not going to count, but he still did it. Right. <laughs> it's like games that have been vacated. They still happened. And we have another whistle. That takes us to the end of quarter number one. Fittingly, it was the two freshmen, even on another play that didn't count, that were first in the backfield, Brazil and Murphy. Freshman dominating, as are the veterans. Clemson all over the Citadel in quarter number one. Boy, are they efficient. Boy, are they talented. I don't know who's going to compete with them.
Moments ago during the break, the Clemson players lined up arm in arm, standing on the sideline while the scoreboard read Unity All In Together. And Dabo Sweeney got the crowd fired up. And this Clemson faithful that is gathered here today applauded the gesture. Fourth down now coming up for the Citadel here in the second quarter. 28-0 Clemson. Tigers have scored on every offensive drive, and they have a defensive touchdown to boot. Yeah, everything they've done, at least to this point, has turned to gold. And as I mentioned earlier, when you are outmanned, you're on the road in a matchup like this, you can't help out the opponent when the Citadel is giving Clemson a lot of help today. And now you have Travis Etienne to return this one. Amari Rogers has already been close to returning them today. ETN across the 40, 30, has a convoy, and down inside the five-yard line. You like that for a changeup, putting ETN back on punt returns? All it does is get it on tape, and now the future opponent has to deal with, all right, well, we're not going to see the normal returner. We're only going to see the other best player on their team. What are they going to do next? Punt return. Put Trevor Lawrence out there? You see Etienne on kickoffs. That time on punt returns, usually Amari Rogers' is domain. It's first and goal, and we've got a new quarterback for Clemson. It's the freshman, DJ Uyangale. The top pocket passer in his class coming out of Inland Empire, California. And they feel he is the next great one here in Death Valley. He is big and physically gifted, there is no doubt. High snap to the tight end, Davis Allen. It sets up second and goal. See, I really like that play call there. You've got a young freshman. You're going to put him in this situation. Don't kid yourself. They put him in this situation because they wanted a red zone situation for the young man. And then you give him a little bit of a backfield action and move the pocket with him. It's a great way to generate confidence. One of the reasons we Andale came to Clemson was to watch and learn from Trevor Lawrence. Dixon pedaling forward, and he's to the one. It sets up third and long. You know, so often in today's world of recruiting, and you know, especially with the quarterback position, everybody wants to play right now. They think that they should be playing right now when they really don't realize they're probably not ready. And this young man decides to come to Clemson all the way across the country knowing full well what's in front of him because he wants to compete, he wants to learn, and you watch over the course of time, he's going to be better for making that decision. Dixon off the left hip. Quarterback keeper. And the first Clemson touchdown, the first of what's likely many for D.J. Leandole. Well, Clemson lists them at 6'4", 250. So what you're going to see in the future with this young man, G.J. is going to be one of those guys that gives you some of that Cam Newton-style run game at the quarterback position. Quarterback power, quarterback counter, quarterback lead. And don't kid yourself, he's a passer first, runner second. PAT good. It started with a big punt return by Travis Etienne, and then the true freshman, the kid who's next in Death Valley, is now DJ Uyangalele. One of the things Dabo Sweeney does over the years, he gets his backups meaningful reps. We saw it with a goal-to-go situation they put yeah. in the backup quarterback, DJ Uyangalele. Experience situational football, the most important area of the field, and for a young quarterback to understand how important that is, throw him in there and see how he works. New kickoff specialist, Jeff Whites for Clemson. Jonathan Whites, excuse me. And a fair catch is made. Well, we'll see if Trevor Lawrence's day is done. Uh, six of seven, 102 yards, two touchdowns through the air, one on the ground. Yawn. Yeah. You know, listen, he picked up right where he left off last week on the road in the wind versus Wake Forest. I think the thing that you have to appreciate the most is how effortless it looks. Whether it's a flick of the wrist, uh, the ability to run, the ability to take off and create plays, throw back across his body. You know, this is a kid, you may not realize, he runs 4-5-5 five, five, falling out of bed every morning. And, and people may not appreciate that. 
option left, and it's blown up by Niles Pinckney, and it sets up second and long. Niles Pinckney for the tackle. Well, Eric, I'll tell you this. Uh, Clemson's proven they can stay off the ground. Yes, they have. Brett Venables was talking about generally Clemson is a penetrating defense. Get up the field on the defense line. This week, starting off, you want to lead with your hands. You want to get your hands on them so you can play the cup block and push them back. And boy, are they pushing them back so far. And generally, the offensive line is a lot bigger than another team's defensive line. It's the opposite here today in Death Valley. Right. And a great point. Fullback dive. And running into a roadblock was Inwanze, third and long. To your point, Eric, the right tackle for the Citadel today, Ben Brockington, number 73, 6'1", 278 pounds. Yeah, and number 67, Prince Howard Whitaker, their left tackle. He looks like a really good-looking tight end out there at 245 pounds, 250 pounds. But when you're running the option, a lot of times you're cut blocking, you're blocking laterally, almost zone blocking off the ball. You could get away with being a lot lighter. Logs, you gave the right tackle 20 extra pounds. It's 230-pound Thomas Crawford. Crawford. And Keith White tripped up in the backfield. That's Andrew Booth. Made his first career start last week against Wake Forest. Part of a secondary, which Davo Sweeney loves. They lost three players who were in that back seven. Actually, more than that when you count the Isaiah Simmons of the world. Davo feels this is his best back seven. Well, I think he feels that way because all of them are run supporters. All of them are good tacklers. He's had good cover guys in the past, but these guys are excellent in space. That was a terrific demonstration of tackling in space right there. Campbell's punt. Is fair caught inside the 30-yard line by the freshman Bowman. Tigers have not been stopped on offense yet. Going for more. Quarterback play has been a big reason for the high renaissance of Clemson football. It started with Taj Boyd, who was a huge recruit for Dabo Sweeney at the time. Well, they signed him late. He was originally verbally committed to West Virginia. And if you have a quarterback, you've got a chance. And not only to just hit on one, well, they've hit on three really in a row. Outside of Hunter Johnson competing and moving on to Northwestern, this can accelerate the growth of your program. And look at North Carolina right now. You hit on Sam Howell. All right, you're a program that's vastly different different than you thought you were going to be because of that position. So the production, the type of people they are, it all lends to the culture here at Clemson. You know how the Greeks had Socrates to Plato to Aristotle, (laughs) and then the fourth one in that lineage was Aristotle's pupil, (laughs) Alexander the Great, the fourth one in this lineage, likely DJ (laughs) Uyangale. So it may even get better. Well, I'll tell you, and it's interesting because if you look at this, and we talked about the situation they put the youngster in on the goal line. Now Trevor Lawrence is back in the game, so it was clearly a situational moment they wanted him to experience, and they called a pass play on the first play of the game. Lawrence to the air. He's got Powell, and Cornell Powell, the fifth-year senior who's waited his turn close to midfield. Lawrence, seven out of eight. Lawrence pumps. Downfield for Ladson. Catches in stride. Touchdown, Clemson. Yet another perfectly thrown football. You're going to see Lats in number two. This is the sluggo. Slant and go. And you've got to commit two steps on the slant in order to get the corner to bite. He runs it perfectly and then is able to get from zero to 60 off of that cut. So fast for a six foot three, 205 pounder and a perfectly thrown ball over the shoulder by Trevor Lawrence. Now one of the mysteries, who would emerge as that vertical threat on the outside without T. Higgins, without Justin Ross? Frank Ladson today, three catch 
catches, 87 yards, two TDs. He's in that mix. He's absolutely in that mix. The route created the separation, but when you look at Trevor Lawrence, who's celebrating the throw, when he gave that nod and a little bit of that shake to look like he was going to throw the slant, he helped create more separation downfield and a bigger window to drop that ball into. Ready for this number? In Lawrence's last nine and a half games, let's call it, 26 touchdown passes, zero interceptions. That was a mature play there by Lawrence as well. If you saw him come to the line before the play, he saw something at coverage. He checked something with a hand motion out to the receivers. He saw that that was going to be there. That was incredible execution. You know, Eric, they didn't just give him the keys to drive the car. They gave him the keys and told him to race it. That's what's different between now and two years ago. you got a true freshman. You don't want to overload him. You realize he's something special. And now you can go on the field, and once that call's made, you know he's going to get you into the right play, out of a bad play, and when you combine the great players around him, you've got something special. For anybody watching the game that has friends or family in attendance, Tom Luganville on his drive back afterwards, if he rolls down the window and gives you a head nod, he's going to step on the gas just to let you know. I know you're ready to go. I'm ready to roll. The Jeep will be pointing north. Tomorrow, women's soccer, a quadruple header on ACC Network, Virginia Tech. And North Carolina at 11 gets it started. Louisville, Florida State follows. Then Virginia Clemson, Wake, and Duke to cap it off. Sunday best right here on the ACC Network. Clemson, every time they've had the ball offensively, they've scored. A defensive touchdown to boot. A big special teams punt return by ETN to set up a score. They've been perfect in this first half. They have. They, they've really been flawless. The execution has been outstanding. Meanwhile, the Citadel just having trouble getting positive yards. They've only had five, for their five possessions, only one has produced positive yards. Yeah, 77 yards on the ground for a triple option team that wants to maintain possession of the ball. And they're now still minus four rushing yards on the day so far. So, And again, it's not like you have something else to lean on. This is who you are. Rainey will throw, hit by Brzee. And it lands incomplete. There is the number three player in the ESPN 300 and the top defensive tackle in his class. No, Eric, the last couple of plays, they've lined up for C and Miles Murphy, the two true freshmen on the same side of the football. One at end, one alongside, not on this particular play. You're going to see him on the nose right there in a shaded technique over the center. He's just hes so powerful. Good pad level, too. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't have wanted to block him on Sundays the way he looks right now, much less on Saturdays. He is going to be a handful for these three years that he's going to be in college. And movement on that Bulldogs offensive line. Offense, number 78, number 78 five yard, yard penalty, penalty. Third, third down. Left tackle, Thomas Crawford. Our 230 pounder. From Louisville, Kentucky. Looks like a tight end out there, I'll tell you what. And he's got a tough matchup across from him, Justin Muscal. And, and that's going to be a tough matchup as we watch this on third and 14. It'll be interesting to see if the Citadel goes to a more conventional drop pack with Brezzi and Murphy lined up on the same side next to each other. Like you were saying, Tom, that's something to watch. Randy in trouble and he's sacked. It's Trenton Simpson, the freshman out of Charlotte. Another true freshman, part of the number one recruiting class in the country. Out of Mallard Creek High School, so much fun to watch him. Uh, Glenson stole him late. He was an Auburn commitment for a long time. And you see him off the edge right here. Unfortunately, it's not a good idea to not block edge guys for Clemson. The linebacker doubled as a running back in high school. He's got a bright future ahead of him. You see Brent Venables talking through some things with him. Six foot three, 225 pounder. Can really run. They're excited about his future. Darion Kendrick returning the punt. Clemson with the ball. A chance to push close to 50 before halftime.
out of the Big Ten this week, and Dabo Sweeney asked about that. He agreed that the Big Ten champion should have a spot in the college football playoff. I, I believe with the games that they're trying to play, the amount of games, there's no question that they had, should have a shot. Now, looking at the stringent parameters that the Big Ten's employing, I think there's going to be some challenges in front of them. No set by weeks, 21-day quarantine as opposed to a 14-day quarantine, so no ability to reschedule games. It's going to be really, really interesting to watch that unfold. The second series of the game for the highly touted freshman DJ Uyangalale. 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 We got it, baby. And off to Lin J. Dixon. He's the number two running back, and for his career, seven yards per carry. <laughs> Last two years, about 1,200 yards. Clemson is a legitimate seven deep at running back. Well, they are, and they want to find out a lot more about some of these younger guys, and they're going to in the second half. I think exclusively you'll see Demarcus Bowman and, and, and maybe even Kobe Pace. So we'll, we'll see how this unfolds, but you're right. They are talented. They just want to get them more experience. Downfield for Powell, a lot of contact, and that's on the Citadel. Destin Mack in coverage. Number seven. 15 yard penalty. First down. I think that was intended for Aju Aju, number 11. Yeah, the freshman. A Joe, a Joe, yes. Yeah, Joe, Joe. And you're going to see that's good, good effort, but the one thing the freshman's going to learn, too, is once he gets up the field. He's got to get back over the top of that defender so that defender can't run him off to the sideline. Darian Rencher, the fifth-year senior, former walk-on. He and Trevor Lawrence have really become good friends. And they've been a big part of the social justice, racial equality push in college football. Rancher again. He's a special guy on this Clemson team. Dabo Sweeney, a former walk-on at Alabama, loves his walk-ons. And this is a walk-on who's turned himself now into a crucial member of that running back rotation. He's the number three back. Yeah, he's a viable commodity. You can tell that they trust him from right up the road here in Anderson, South Carolina. And again, to your point, just a wealth of riches in the backfield. We on to the throw. Looking for six, incomplete for E.J. Williams. And it's third and five. Key third down up here for the young guy, which is going to be good for him. See what they give him, what he's allowed to maybe get into or out of. And how does he manage this area of the field? And that's what's always being evaluated with young quarterbacks, all right? Situational football, down a distance, understanding the situation. You can't take a sack here because now you put a potential field goal at risk. These are great moments that tomorrow they'll go over with on tape with DJ and help him become a better football player. A lot of pressure. They've, they've scored a touchdown on every drive. Oh, he completes. That's Will Brown, the redshirt junior. Complete number 82, Will Brown. First down, Tigers at the 14. Rencher spins away from one defender. Now another and drags tacklers inside the 10. A gain of eight, second and two. Now, Eric, you look at this defensive front for the Citadel, and, and, and ever since DJ came into the game, all of a sudden, they're playing quarterback run, and the give has been so plentiful on this drive. It has been, that, and that's been the read every time for them. And Clemson, although they're playing backups across the board on offense right now, they left in all five starters on the offensive line, probably for two reasons. One, to protect DJ, and two, they want these guys to continue to develop. We mentioned at the Open, replacing four of five starters. They want these guys to get a lot of work early in the season. Yeah, and Eric, they're twos at both of the tackle spots. Walter Parks, a true freshman, 13th-ranked offensive tackle in last year's class. And then Mitchell Mays, who we had as the number one-ranked guard in the class, lined up at the number two spot at offensive tackle. Again, two true freshmen. They're going to get plenty of turns here in the second half. Third and goal, the two true freshman wide receivers 
Uh, Joe and Williams lined up to the outside. Watch for another design quarterback run here. Louis Angle away, struggled with the snap. It doesn't matter. His second touchdown of the game, and the onslaught continues. Good call, Eric. Louis Angle, when, when he makes this, he boxes the snap a little bit. Well, it was going to be the same result. Was able to secure the football. This was just going to be a token backfield fake, and this was a keep all the way for that man. They've now ran two designed quarterback runs for DJ around the goal line for his two scores with pulling guards coming up to lead the way for him. A lot of times when Trevor Lawrence is running in, it's the read option for him. Designed quarterback runs use his size. PAT by Jonathan Weitz is good. DJ Uyangalale became a fan of Clemson way back when Taj Boyd was throwing bombs to Sammy Watkins. Now he's running in for scores himself. The Tigers have been perfect in this first half, and you got a feel for the Citadel. This is like a substitute teacher running detention right now. Yeah, and you know what you're going to get when that starts. Now he's got to do push-ups. Every third down. Some scores today, so he's trying to... For an ACC fan. They're going to have to put him through a full-body massage. He's going to need an IV after the game. Yeah. In the 10 a.m., the Stars of... Clemson has scored a touchdown on every offensive drive. The Citadel has five yards of total. And unfortunately, under the coronavirus, pay, yeah, listen, I haven't been able to be that man right there, DJ Uwe Angelale, and the job that he's done taking over for Trevor Lawrence. And there's no pressure on him. The Citadel is not playing very well right now. They can't seem to get anything going. They can't sustain a drive. Their poor defense has been on the field the entire first half. So it's given the young freshman at quarterback for Clemson some opportunities. A lot of backups in for Clemson. And those backups are pretty good. Kane Patterson, listed as a third-string middle linebacker, another former ESPN 300 recruit. Meaningful snaps. I think that's the thing. It's, you're getting numbers on the field for guys that, who knows, four, five, six, eight weeks down the road, you might have to rely on. Flag down. That's Darion Kendrick, who did not play last week. He was a big success story for this program last year. Originally recruited as a big-time wideout coming out of high yep. school. Had to move to corner on an emergency basis during the spring last year, but impressed coaches. They said, you know what, we're going to play him at corner. He started and turned into an all-conference DB. And a, and a rare mental error from a Clemson player and a foolish error, and you saw him getting... A mouthful and an earful from Brent Venables on the sideline. There's the dive, and Niles Pinckney right there. When the D linemen are making the play against this option offense, that's a bad sign for the D or the offense. Yeah, it really is. It means two things. Number one, they're not getting them on the ground, and they're not getting to the second level to block the linebacker, so everybody pretty much has a free flowing lane to get to the football. Eric talked to you earlier about the weight discrepancy. Pinkley's 300 pounds. He weighs more than anybody on the Citadel's offensive line. And a short run that time by Nwanze. Redshirt sophomore, civil engineering major. And again, that B-back depth has been tested. And Nwanze, normally the third stringer, top two are out. Yeah, they're, they're literally barely have enough guys to take the field from an offensive formation standpoint, at least to the level they're accustomed to playing with. False start coming against the Bulldogs. Part of snap. False start. Offense number 67. Five yard penalty. Third down. 
If you're an ACC fan, Packer and Durham, a must-watch Monday through Friday, 7 to 10 a.m. The stars of the show, though, and I love Mark and I love Wes, but the stars of the show... Dogs. Yeah, well, you got test, and unfortunately, under the coronavirus pandemic, we haven't all been able to be, certainly as a guest on the show, in the same basement to pass the sniff test yeah. for the pups. Got to bring treats. Yep. Rainey under pressure, got rid of it. And a nice game by Raleigh Webb, the first time we've really called his game since the first drive. Yep. And it's a first down. This is the fastest player on this team, fastest player on the offense. He's got good size. You kind of feel like if you saw this guy in the spread offense, and Brandon Rainey does a nice little dump off here on the underneath route. If you saw him in a spread offense, he runs really well. He might be a really, really good fit. He just gets limited opportunities in the triple option. First trip into Clemson territory. And you just can't get behind the chains when you're this kind of offense. All stars. Offense. Left side of the line. Five yard penalty. First down. He didn't even call a number. Just the whole entire left side of the line. Eric, that sounds like calls that were made against you quite frequently. Yeah, when, when you're lining up against Miles Murphy every play, it's easy to try and get a head start. Luke, I want to ask you a question. You got two guys like Brezzi and Murphy. When's the last time you saw two guys like that, or even one guy in college football that comes in, looks the way they do, and starts out of the gate as hot as they have? I don't know if I have in terms of two at the same time in the same class. Um, you know, that's a really good question. I'd have to think back long and hard about who that could potentially be. You know, young guys that have looked the part early, obviously, to Davian, Clowney, and there's been a number of other guys. The Bosa brothers. Yes, absolutely, the Bosa brothers, too. But I'm at field level, and I'm telling you, I played on Sundays for nine years, and a lot of NFL players look like, and some of them wish they looked like number 11 and number 98. <laughs> Third down coming up. What did you say at the top of the broadcast? Man children. Man children. Two of them. Actually, quite a few of them. And there's a bunch on the field right now. You see a corner number two. Fred Davis is a yep. fifth ranked corner in the class uh, a year ago. There's Brian Mercier, number 11, right there. We've talked about Kane Patterson, number 17. is just a sophomore. Was in the ESPN 300 at the middle linebacker spot. Getting a bunch of turns. Made some tackles uh, today. So... Uh, th this is a younger, less experienced group we're seeing here as the second quarter winds down, but nonetheless very talented. Yeah, a lot of twos and threes, especially on the back end right now, third and long. And Wanze, but whistle blown before the snap. I would imagine this is likely four down territory here for the Citadel plus territory. You got nothing to lose. It's no question. It's over. I mean, well, when I heard you say third and long, we've said that too much for an option yeah. team for a triple option, heavy ground game. And again, we talked about it at the top of the broadcast. Clemson outmans the Citadel, but the Citadel isn't coming in with their best group of players. They're shorthanded, and they know what they're up against. You're not just facing an FBS team. It's the number one team in the country with just an infinite amount of depth. Around the ACC, Pittsburgh, top 25 team now, knocking off Syracuse, BC, with a big win against Duke. Notre Dame now in, an ACC member in football for this right. year, shutting out South Florida, who beat the Citadel last week, and UCF doubling up Georgia Tech at the half. You might be wondering, all right, what, what's the motivation to stick around for the second half? We hinted at this at the top of the broadcast. Clemson is going to play a lot of young guys. Mm -hmm. They brought in the number one recruiting class in the country. Yep. Those are going to be meaningful reps for them, which will pay dividends later this year and certainly the next few years. Yeah, we're going to introduce you to some young, fresh faces that are going to end up becoming faces of the program. Rainey in an ambush. And it brings up fourth down. Skalski, the tackle. 
One guy that I'm really looking forward to watching in the second half is number two, 22, Trent Simpson. He already made a play earlier in this game, but this is a guy, I talked to my old teammate, C.J. Spiller, who's now on coaching staff for Clemson. One of my favorite players the last few years to watch on film was Isaiah Simmons, and Mike Jones has filled into that role, number six, for Clemson, and he's filled in admirably, but at six foot 220, he is not quite the Isaiah Simmons molded. Trenton Simpson, a lot more reach, a lot more length on him at 6'3", 225. I want to see him play in that role, that Sam linebacker, nickel, safety, edge rusher, all those things that Isaiah Simmons did. I would love to see Trenton Simpson do a lot of that in the second half. Second charge, timeout. Timeout will be 30 seconds. Well, Eric, I'll tell you what. I think you'll see Trenton Simpson play all of those positions but one. I don't think he'll be in the back end. I don't know if he's going to be the type of guy that has that type of range. As you take a look at Clemson's schedule and the new-look ACC, and as you mentioned, Notre Dame is a full-time member, no divisions. Is there a game that scares you there? No. If Louisville had been on the schedule, maybe. Right. And, you know, well, listen, the game tonight between Miami and Louisville, I think is a huge statement moment for Miami. It really is. And then if you go down, well, again, several weeks from now, you're on the road at Notre Dame, and everybody's team might be different. We have COVID. We have injuries. We have contact tracing. They have depth. They have depth, so they might be the team that's least affected by it. And the Citadel will punt it away. It takes a bulldog bounce and dies inside the 10-yard line. Right now, I don't think realistically there is another team in the ACC that's close. And we haven't seen a team in the ACC, frankly, in the last several years that's been close. They're on another level. Well, they're on another level, and they're on another, another level at the key spot, the places where everybody's trying to load up with players. Offensive line, defensive line, defensive corner, and the quarterback. And those four areas are where they are dominant, they are deep, and when you have a substitution, you don't have a drop-off in talent. New quarterback for Clemson, it's Tyson Pumachan, a redshirt freshman. Dabo Swinney believes he has three NFL quarterbacks on his roster. This is the third. And Pumachan will run it. An offensive coordinator, Tony Elliott, told us this week, of all the three that will play, He's the best option as a true designated runner. He's got a little more quickness, a little more shiftiness. He's a big-bodied young man out of the state of Connecticut. He's six foot three, 220. So all three of these quarterbacks for Clemson look the part, but they really like him on the ground. Timeout. Timeout. Player injury. Defense. Play clock. The 40 seconds played. Water. Injured bulldog player. Yeah, it's Dewey Green, the fourth, one of the starting D-linemen, sophomore from Columbia. Dabo Sweeney has said many times in the offseason, he feels this is the most talented roster he has had at Clemson. Now, will it be the best team? That remains to be seen. That's got to play out, but they've been... On an incredible run, and in the second half, we're going to get into how they built this thing, and Lugs, you cover recruiting. You're our national recruiting analyst. The state of South Carolina, go back about a decade. They were churning out some high-end talent, and they all went to South Carolina. Alshon Jeffrey and Marcus Lattimore and Clowney and Swearinger. That well dried up. Stephon Gilmore. Stephon Gilmore. That well dried up. Sure did. And South Carolina did too. They could not maintain their success. In the second half, we'll get into how Clemson has expanded its recruiting footprint, and that's enabled them to sustain this success now uh, going on seven, eight years. Well, the, the ca- they've cast a wide net, and in my estimation, they've been the best out-of-state recruiter of panned-out players that we've seen in college football for the last 12 years. Puma John to the air. Floats it downfield for a Joe, a Joe. It's incomplete. Third and three. I mean, just a prime example, and we'll get into it in the second half, but Tyson Pumachon here from Connecticut. All right, guess who else was from Connecticut? Christian Wilkins. Oh, 
Why are they going to Clemson? All right, and then you look at Sammy Watkins, Florida, Deshaun Watson, Georgia. The list goes on and on and on. And again, those players that were highly touted panned out at the next level. Not a good snap. Pumachan will eat it. And it brings up fourth down. I don't think Clemson will call another play. To your point, Tom, you get a DJ Uyunglele to come from California to sit for a year when he could start at probably 100 schools around the country right now. No question about it. We're going to get a better look at the future of Clemson in the second half. But in the spectacular now, boy, is this team spectacular. A little of what you expected, but they're already in midseason form from week one and week two. The Tigers looking every bit the part of the number one team in the country. 49-0. Most points and a half for Clemson since 2006. the ACC on ESPN and you have watched Clemson dismantle the Citadel. It is 49-0, the number one team in the country looking every bit the part of the juggernaut that they are. And Shroff, Tom Luganville, Eric Wood down on the sideline. We didn't see a lot of Trevor Lawrence. About a quarter and a half he got his work done. Uh, eight of nine, not a bad outing. And listen, everything kind of was effortless. I don't want to call it easy because you got to still work for things. Really what Clemson wanted to do was play the way they played in the first half and then remain healthy and get out of this game healthy. But the efficiency and the accuracy from Trevor Lawrence on his nine attempts, eight completions, was exceptional. It's, it, it's, it's what we've come to expect from him. Again, the goal line run game that they like to go with with the quarterback position inside the 10-yard line and then the beautiful throw over the top to Frank Ladson Jr., the sophomore, off of the sluggo route. Maybe, Anish, just maybe, they have found their vertical threat for 2020. Yeah, that could be a small moment in this game that could pay off as the season continues. Quinn Caster. Kastner, the third kicker Clemson has used, boots it into the end zone for a touchback as we go down to Eric Wood. That is exactly the first half that Dabo Sweeney wanted to see from his team. Both sides of the football completely took care of business. In a game like this, both coaches could agree to shorten the game in the second half with a running clock. Dabo Sweeney elected in favor of that, but Brett Thompson, the coach of the Citadel, did not. Very interesting. They only play four games this year. He wants to come up here and get his money worth. He said he wanted to make an enjoyable experience up here, but surprised going to be considering the score of the game and the complete dominance by Clemson. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised as well, Eric. And just from a health and safety standpoint, you're already down a lot of bodies, and he must be expecting to get a lot of his young and inexperienced players some, some turns that he thinks are going to help him over the next two weeks. They have had trouble rushing the ball, and this is an option offense. Negative one rushing yards in the first half for the Citadel. Two years ago, when the Citadel played to a 10-10 halftime tie against number one Alabama, they ran for 275 yards in that game. Yeah, and again, if you can't get ahead of the chains and you're not dictating terms in an option offense, if you're going backwards, there's nowhere else to turn. You're not built to come from behind or play behind the sticks. Rainey, options. It's Keith White. He's on the track team and bumped out of bounds hard after a first down gain. I was going to say bumped. <laughs> he was, he was leveled. Ray wow. Thornton the third. Another freshman, a redshirt freshman from Columbus, Georgia. Take a look at this to the top of your screen. Right from the right to left. Boom. Another one of those six foot one, six foot, six foot two defenders that Clemson has become accustomed to playing with. On the back end, they have a lot of length, long armed guys, rangy kids, whether it's a corner or safety. You remember Tanner Muse, six foot four long frame. They, they've had him across the board. That's that's the mode of operation for them in evaluation. Go back to curse before Muse. Yep, yep. It's also amazing to me how many jerseys are already of his in the stands wearing number 16. <laughs> Popular guy, huh? 
<laughs> oh, man. Big seller. Name yeah. it. Name hey, it. Clo- name. Columbus, Georgia is represented yeah. extremely well throughout the stands here. Are you telling me he needs to get a little name, image, and likeness money? Exactly. Hey, that would have been my strategy going into college. As an offensive lineman, I would have, I would have figured out a defensive lineman. Elvis Doomer wore, Bill wore number 58. Yeah. Uh, the defensive player of the year in college that year. I should have wore number 58 as a center, knowing we wouldn't be on the field at the same time, and then picked up those jersey sales. <laughs> Eric Wood looking for those loopholes always. Incomplete through the hands of Sessions. You write home to your family. Nobody writes home. You email home to your family. How's it going at Clemson? You know what? <laughs> Everywhere I look on campus, someone's wearing my jersey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> look at these three little birdies here. Dabo Sweeney says, I've got three NFL quarterbacks. We saw all three in the first half. Lauren started. Leongalele. And then Pumachan. Third and nine. And not much there. Fourth down. And on the 32, Mika and Bunter. Seems the Citadel is taking minimal risk on third and long. Missing on the throw right there on second down. That was actually a well-thrown ball by quarterback Brandon Rainey. Interesting comment to Anish about the three quarterbacks on the roster. And th- Dabo thinks he's got three NFL guys. Chase Bryce transfers to Duke. They had a rough one today against BC. I'm on the game next week for Virginia. But it'll be interesting to see how he pans out over the next two seasons as well. Matt Campbell to punt. Will Sweeney back deep to receive. And if you're wondering, yes, he is the son of Kathleen Sweeney. <laughs> Will Sweeney to a nice applause. Gets to about the 14. Kathleen Sweeney's popular in these parts, Luke's. Yeah, I hear he's related to him as well. DJ Weangle in at quarterback to begin this third quarter for Clemson. And the second stringers on the offensive line join him. That was one area Dabo Sweeney was not pleased with after last week's win against Wake Forest, the play of the second string O-line. He didn't like the execution, didn't feel like they were as productive as he expected. And a handoff on first down. That's Darian Rencher. I feel like this is the point where I'm obliged to defend the O-line in this situation. And what I, what I will say is they were very young up front on their second string offensive line. And that is the hardest position to develop at when you're transitioning into college. It's so hard. In high school, you just do so much less at the line of scrimmage as far as communication goes, as far as combo blocks. And you're trying to learn this fast offense. And as well as that, you're often trying to put on so much size to play at that next level that it takes a while to develop. They have freshmen uh, peppered around this backup offensive line, so that, that's part of the reason they started slow last week. Now that was a first down run by Ches Malusi, the sophomore. And we have movement up front, a Joe and Destin Mack pointing fingers. Ball starts. Number 11, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. No, Eric, I agree with you on your assessment of the, the difficult transition. It's a steep learning curve because at the high school level, these kids are so big and strong, they don't necessarily have to be technically sound because they can just throw people around. Now, all of a sudden, it's a whole different ball game when it comes to the nuances of the position, and that takes some adjustment. Screen pass, J.C. Chalk. Taken down, not sure he got back to the line of scrimmage. Chalk had his first career touchdown last week. He is the grandson of Dabo Sweeney's old coach at Bama, Gene Stallings. That's the one thing that Clemson, the coaching staff, I think the fans were excited about was the tight end position. Braden Galloway, J.C. Chalk kind of getting back into the mix. We saw a glimpse of it last week. It's really been non-existent so far today. Weangle's pass incomplete off the helmet of another player. And to your point, I wonder with 
the opponent this week if there was a concerted effort to try to use some of those outside receivers knowing what they have with the tight ends and running backs in the passing game? You may very well be right because they love the tight end stuff and they can save that for some conference play. So look at this ball. Looks like he changed his mind. He did. I think he got concerned about underneath coverage there and tried to pull it back at the last moment. Fortunately, the arm's going forward. Incomplete pass. Taquan Johnson got hit right in the back. On third and long. Escaping pressure. Wide open, E.J. Williams. All the way down to the 40-yard line. Mack with the ankle tackle to save an even bigger play. No, I love it when the quarterback, the young quarterbacks, can evade and extend the play, yet keep their eyes downfield. And this is what he does. Throws it back across his body. Always got to be careful about that because you can get yourself into trouble. But really just the wherewithal to understand what's in front of him and not just decide to take off as a runner. Against a four-man rush, a little screen. And there is Will Sweeney, Davos' kid for a short game. Save for the final drive of the first half when there wasn't much time on the clock. Clemson has scored a touchdown on every offensive possession. It's a good last name to have in these parts. It certainly is. Might carry some weight. Malusi gets a push from the pile. Eric, when you hear after week one, hey, we liked what we saw from our team, but, you know, the second string O-line needs to be better. First world problems, right? That is first world problems. When you're playing against Wake Forest, who's a quality team in this league, and you're complaining that your backup offensive line didn't have the best day, that means one, that means two things. One, they played significant meeting minutes that you're able to even judge them until you're blown out the opponent. So, yes, that is absolute first world problems from the deepest, most talented team in the country. On the ground again, that's Michael Duke, sophomore out of Charleston. It'll bring up fourth down. You a little surprised, Anish? We haven't seen Demarcus Bowman, the young freshman, a you know, number four running back in the class a year ago. We saw him as a return man. Haven't seen any of them in the backfield. Or Kobe Pace, who Absolutely. looked pretty good against Wake Forest. Yeah, and this may be by design. Again, don't put too much on tape. You've got a conference slate ahead. Are you okay with going for it here? Yeah, absolutely. I think you're hopefully going to run the game again or create a situational moment for your quarterback on a critical down in plus territory. Little speed option. Uyangale keeping it. Ball is out. And the Citadel will take over on downs. That's what you can't do. I like the play call. you got a big, strong runner. You're going to run speed option. Give Citadel some credit. But you can't put the ball on the ground. A rare Clemson drive that does not end with points. The Zen of Dabo. He has ushered in a golden age here at Clemson. And let's be honest, when he was named interim coach after Tommy Bowden was let go, all this time later, did you think we would be standing here talking about Dabo Sweeney as the best or second best coach in all of college football? I don't think anybody did. And anybody who says yes probably isn't being overly truthful with you. Um, you know, the, the reputation this program had was great athletes, at times great players. You'd get on the field and in pregame warm-up, you'd look over your shoulder, you'd say, whoa. But then they didn't play like that all the time. And I think that was the biggest hurdle he had to overcome was finishing seasons, playing to an expectation, and reaching a sense standard that you set and you strive for each and every week. Right to the outside, slowed up by Simpson and then finished off by his teammates. The transformation of Clemson into a program that would stub its toe in big games mm -hmm. to a program that is now flat out a big game, big time program. Well, they redefined the term Clemsoning. It went from screwing it up to kicking everybody's tail. And I, I think that the one thing that you've got to credit is not just the football program, not just the coaching staff, not just the kids, but this institution made a university commitment 
unapologetically by saying, listen, everybody get on board because our greatest revenue producer is what we're going to invest in. And if we do it right, everybody, the community, the university, the faculty, the academic side, they are all going to benefit. Justin Maskell with the staff to set up third down on the quarterback keeper. Clemson has reeled off nine straight 10 win seasons. A dozen wins or more in the last five seasons. Since the start of 2015, 70 and five. You, you can keep going. You run out of superlatives. Well, and they're all based upon sustained excellence. It's one thing to build something. It's another thing when the target's on your back to sustain it for a consistent period of time. Downfield incomplete. He wanted Ryan McCarthy, who's also a right fielder on the Citadel's baseball team. Yeah, I think that's one of the things, and Eric, I'd like to get your opinion on this as well, that, that is underrated about Dabo Sweeney and Nick Saban. Everybody talks about process and recruiting and having great players, but what I think they've done the best job of is getting kids to respond to success. When everybody's patting them on the back, telling them how great they are, can you respond and still meet that standard that you set for yourself? It's very hard to do with young people. Yeah, no one's done it as good as Clemson, Alabama. Ohio State's been close with sustained success lately, yep. but no one's like them. And I think part of it, you know, obviously they both have great cultures, but when you recruit the way they do, you always know as a player that there's someone behind you that can take your job. And when there's someone behind you like that, you constantly have to go so hard. Hemingway said the great thing is to last and to get your work done. Boy, have they accomplished some things here at Death Valley. It's now Tyson Pumachan's turn. The redshirt freshman 0 for 1 in this game. Out of Connecticut, another big time recruit. Dabo Sweeney has raved about the talent in his quarterback room. Pumachan to throw toward the sideline, incomplete off the hands of a Joe. Good coverage there by Destin Mack. Good coverage, and I think if, if Pumachan had it to do over again, he would have back-shouldered that throw. When you've got the defender and the target, and the target has a height advantage, and they're even, it's an opportunity to put a better-placed ball on the sideline. And that's, again, that's inexperience. You're not getting the ton of the reps during the week, and certainly not playing as much in games. Here's a handoff, and this is Dukes. Lost the football. A little too much shake and bake, and he just couldn't hang on to the football. The Citadel are with the turnover, and they'll take over in Clemson territory. And again, Michael Dukes, just a sophomore. Limited turns, but there are two things you have to be able to do to play this position and stay on the field. Pass protect, and don't put the ball on the ground. And he just learned a sore lesson right there. It's going to be, a, we talked about teaching moments today, meaningful snaps. Well, when you get your snaps, you can't put the ball on the ground as a running back. And Javante Middleton forced the fumble. Especially when you're as loaded as Clemson is at running back. You simply can't put the ball yeah. on the ground because there's just so many guys that they can put in the game. No room for error. And Jackson Carmen putting a hand around Dukes. The returning starter on that offensive line. Rainey hit as he throws it. Maskell bringing the pressure, and it's incomplete. Tonight, ACC Network's primetime game highlights Wake Forest and NC State. Devin Leary, the starting quarterback for the Wolfpack. NC State coming off a 4-8 and eight season, yeah. ravaged by injuries ravaged. last year yeah. against a Wake Forest team that has now built up some momentum over the last three, four years with Dave Clawson. Well, what I respect so much about both of these programs is these coaching staffs have been great developers of talent. They may not be getting college-ready guys right away, but they've developed their program into winning sustainable programs. White, or rather, Sessions... And taken down by Venables. Tyler Venables, one of the two sons for defensive coordinator Brent Venables on this roster, along with Jake. Yeah, Tyler wasn't blessed with Jake's size. Jake, as a linebacker, got to play some considerable snaps a year ago. 6'2", 235. Tyler just 
a young pup back there in the back end at 5'10", 200. Name of the game at B-Back, Donnie Brechtel, a junior walk-on who had never seen the field until today. And he is the backup B-Back. Rainey throwing downfield, incomplete. Yeah, that's a tall task for Raleigh Webb with Kendrick in coverage. Yeah, I tell you, Raleigh Webb, we talked about it earlier. I, I'd really like to see him in a, in a different style offense because he has physical ability and they're limited in the type of production he can provide because of the nature of the scheme. Got to imagine Kendrick still in there, probably just to get some more reps. He didn't play last week. Good punt here by Campbell. Two-time All-Conference punter who unfortunately went viral after last week for shanking a punt, but got some therapy on game day this morning with Pat McAfee. Citadel punter, junior. Two-time All-Conference punter, Matt Campbell, looking incredibly dapper. How are you doing, Matt? I'm good, sir. How are you doing? I would like to talk to you about what happened this past weekend against USF. Ball through the fingertips under pressure. Ball is a touchdown. I actually made a couple calls to my friends. I think you will know who they are. Everybody, no matter how long you play, goes through something like this. There is light at the end of the tunnel. The grass is greener on the other side and all that stuff. You're actually a part of our fraternity even more so now. And we're proud to have you, brother. Can we go up from here? There you go. That's some love. Make the kid feel good. And I like what Brent Thompson told us when we asked him, what did you say to your punter? I didn't say anything. I don't try to talk to the kickers. Leave them alone. Don't talk to them. And listen, it's such it's such a fragile psyche. Puma John still in there at quarterback, and we get a look at another freshman running back, Kobe Pace, who just carried for two yards a moment ago. Looking for a Joe. And off his fingertips, Mack on the coverage. And uh, Destin Mack against some pretty talented and athletic wide receivers has had some nice moments today. He has. He's hung in there. And he had what looked like was going to be a potential breakup on a pass on the first touchdown to Frank Ladson in the first quarter. He had his hand on the ball, good coverage, good placement. Just got the ball pulled away from him. So one of the bright spots on defense and one of the best cover corners and athletes uh, in the conference. So third down now. Pumachan going over the signals with that second to string O-line. Escaping. And he's going to be shy of the marker by about a couple of yards. Sets up fourth down. Rather than force it, weren't able to convert, but rather than force it, you understand you're backed up. Don't make a risk with the football that could result in a turnover. I don't mind that move right there by Tyson Pumachan at all. And I believe this is the first Clemson punt. Will Spires, four-year starter, Dad Hope he doesn't, Bill. Hope he doesn't pull a hamstring. Yeah. Dad Bill played in the majors. Good kick here. And a fair catch signaled for by Poole and made inside the 20. That's a hundred fifty-three yards for Will Spire. Tonight, 11 Eastern, it's the huddle on ACC Network. Jordan Cornett, Eric Mackley, the former Clemson Tiger, E.J. Manuel, and Mark Richt with a complete breakdown of all the ACC games today. We've got Wake and NC State tonight on the ACC Network. Miami and Louisville, a big game. No coastal chaos this year, however. <laughs> One division. If they'd had the division, though, it would be the healthiest it's been in a long time. And we haven't even had a chance to see Virginia Tech yet. Yeah. 
Hey, speaking of that huddle crew, Eric McLean is the one who helped me out with that information on my opening today about in 2015, that was the year they replaced four starting offensive linemen, all of them made all conference. What I didn't realize is that he was kind of tooting his own horn that he made all conference because Eric McLean was part of that offensive line. That's a sneaky, hum- humble brag. That is a sneaky, humble brag. I got to respect it. I respect it. I like it. Second and 11 after a loss of a yard. This option offense held to just 20 rush yards through almost three quarters. Rainey will throw off his back foot. And out of bounds was Tyler Venables. Nearly came down with his first pick. Rolling on the field. Catch is made. Number 12. See Tyler Vanables, we talked about him, just five foot ten. He's up in the alley and then he backs off and goes up and takes the ball away, just runs out of real estate along the sideline. That's fun, you know, being a coach's kid and being around it and and knowing how these kids grew up. You're in the equipment room and you're in the training room and you're in the coaches' offices and you just absorb so much. There's just so much football around you, and then you get the opportunity to play. For your dad, I got a chance to coach with my dad. It's just it's a wonderful feeling. And Wanze turned back, and it's a nice feeling for Brent Venables, also Dabo Sweeney, who's got a couple of kids on the team. And with Venables, it's interesting because going back a few years, every time a big coaching job opened up, his name would come up. Sure. And he's decided to stay, and maybe that changes once his kids are out of college. But it wouldn't surprise me either if he becomes the Bud Foster to Dabo Sweeney's Frank Beamer. You've got a great place to live here. You've got unlimited resources. You're making a ton of money, and you're always going to have great players. Don't ever take any of those things for granted. He is the highest paid D coordinator in college football. And there is Dabo's kid, Will Sweeney, with the fair catch on the punt. The National Endowment for the Humanities has awarded a $400,000 grant to Clemson University English professors Rhonda Robinson Thomas and Lee Morrissey. It's to support a touring exhibition of Thomas's research, Call My Name, The Black Experience in the South Carolina Upstate from Enslavement to Desegregation. Back in at quarterback, number five, DJ back in at quarterback for Clemson. And we get our first look at Demarcus Bowman in the backfield. And there is Bowman, the speedy freshman to the 39-yard line. A top 25 recruit, Luke, yeah, who's probably no better than fourth or fifth on the Clemson running back depth chart. For now. And Eric's going to hes gonna understand what I'm saying here. He's the one back that skill set and style-wise is the closest to C.J. Spiller that they have. He's got that wiggle. He's low to the ground. He's got deceptive power. He's already 190 pounds. He'll be 200 by next year. He is a really exciting back. You're absolutely right. And I I got the chance, and I'll say the pleasure, of blocking for C.J. Spiller up in Buffalo. And what an incredible running back C.J. was. Extremely fast. I mean, different level speed even at the NFL level. He was also more physical than he's given credit for. Well, now C.J. is back on staff here, getting to pour into these young running backs. And what an asset that is for this university to have just such a quality human being in in, in C.J. Spiller. And their staff is littered with just incredible people but they had another one in C.J. Spiller. Bowman and Pace have been likened by Dabo Sweeney to Spiller and James Davis. Old Thunder and Lightning combo. E.J. Williams has had a nice game. The true freshman picking up a first down. That's his third catch. Yeah, he's been very impressive. He's got quick hands. He's a natural plucker of the football. And a very accurate throw there by Uwe Angelele. Guys, I got breaking news. I just got a text message in a not-so-humble brag moment for our man Eric McLean. He was the only first-team all-conference guy on the line as well. (laughs) For the brand, right? Yeah, you just remind him that some of us are working. 
That's Drew Sweeney, the other Sweeney brother. We don't have the Herb Street boys in uniform tonight. Otherwise, my man Kirk, who's on the call for the Louisville-Miami game tonight, can see his two boys potentially get in. A lot of legacy kids. Um, you know, a lot of famous last names on this Clemson team. Dabo's a big believer in the walk-on program, even with all the five stars and four stars. Are they now just gush into this program? Three quarters in the books, the number one team in the country has done a lot of celebrating on this Saturday afternoon in Death Valley. First home game of the year, all Tigers. Four fingers up, it's the start of the fourth quarter. Clemson scored all of its points in the first half. And the Tigers have the ball. They're on the move, but facing a third down and three in Bulldogs territory. Chalk the tight end motions. Low snap, DJ Uyangale. Under pressure, throws, and it's broken up. That's Destin Mack once again. Actually, that's Chris Beverly, and it sets up fourth down. I can just envision tomorrow Tony Elliott, the offensive coordinator, watching tape with DJ and talking to him about at this level, that throw for you is probably complete in high school. But you got to be very, very careful now because you throw late to the sidelines, just like throwing late over the middle. Again, a great teaching moment for the young quarterback getting valuable reps today. Kobe Pace makes the catch, driven back. This will depend on the spot. It's going to be close. It looks like he might have it. He needed the 31. And it appears it is enough for a first down. Without measurement? I guess so. And now they'll bring the chains out. Yeah, I think they're going to need to on this one. They may not review this play because of the score. And if you're wondering how replay reviews work... There's what's called competitive effect. And so the spot ends up being a little short, and it's and Bulldogs, Bulldogs ball. Mm -hmm. Because of competitive effect, if the officials feel the game is out of hand, even if a play that's close warrants a review, yep. they won't. That's likely the scenario there. Forty-nine to nothing, Clemson on top of the Citadel. One of four scheduled games in the fall for the Bulldogs. They will hope to play a spring conference schedule in the SoCon, but games like these, the coaching staff made no bones about it in terms of the athletic budget and what it means for the other programs. Sure. Huge. Oh, absolutely. Not only does it fuel your football program, it fuels the entire department. Raleigh Webb throwing downfield for McCarthy, who makes the catch at the 30-yard line, receiver <laughs> to receiver. Really, it's the most productive pass play that the Citadel offense has had all day long. And really, the reverse plays a week ago that featured Raleigh Webb, who throws the ball this time, were the most productive plays on offense against South Florida. A little too, little too late. Nonetheless, very effective. Raleigh Webb, a four-year starter, 30 catches last year, 10 receiving touchdowns. And they feed Brechtel. First carry for the junior walk-on, making his collegiate debut today. Injuries at the B-back position forced the Citadel to adjust, and Brechtel getting a shot. I mean, it, it really just paints the picture of what Brent Thompson and his staff have had to go through just to field a team. Again, you, you're at 63 scholarships. You've got a, a, a huge walk-on program. But when you have the opt-outs and the injuries and the inexperience, it's just hard to compete, even against somebody that's not as talented as Clemson. Sessions, the carry. And then when it is somebody as talented at Clemson, the scoreboard illustrates. Absolutely, it does. 
Yeah, Brechtel coming into today was not even on the official roster that was in the press box for us at game time. I know. The sports information director comes up and fills us in with this name that's not on the roster. And, and really, and then when we asked, well, how much does he play? Well, he hasn't played at all. <laughs> Rainey in trouble, stumbling, throws it to the sideline, incomplete. Yeah, but if you're Donnie Brechtel, listen, one day you're going to tell your kids, maybe your grandkids, hey, the first time I got into a college football game at Death Valley against the number one team in the country. Against the number one team in the land. That's exactly right. Hey, Eric, you know, you're down there watching this, and one of the things I know that Brent Venables and, of course, Dabo Sweeney and Tony Elliott, the offensive coordinator, they wanted to get through this thing healthy, and it looks like Clemson has. Yeah, they have. They've done a great job all day of protecting their legs from the cut blocks, and, and luckily both teams have come out of this unscathed. And the Citadel can't get on the board. Kintner misses. And Clemson takes over. 12.48 to go in regulation. Tigers up 49 zip. ACC Network Football is brought to you by Bojangles. Feed the family with bone-in fried chicken, boneless chicken supremes, scratch-made biscuits, and fix-ins. It's bow time. Tyson Pumacons is in Florida. Clemson on top, 49-0. Tyson Pumachon in at quarterback. We've seen all three. Trevor Lawrence started 8 for 9, 163 yards, four total touchdowns. DJ Uwe Angelale, 8 of 11 passing, a couple of rushing touchdowns, and now the redshirt freshman in there, Tyson Pumachon, 0 for 3 today, still looking for his first completion. Down the middle of the field, and it's broken up, incomplete. Parrish scored in the old Dominion transfer on the coverage. Tyson Pumachon did a really nice job right here, kind of steering the safety with his eyes and his front shoulder. Nice little pump. And then just probably needed, actually it's a really well-thrown ball. Venus might just, just have missed the ball coming in with the swipe of the hand from the Citadel defender. Pressure, check down. And Chez Malusi tackled in the backfield. Well, Malusi looked very fortunate to maintain possession of that ball. Looked as if when he got hit, he was juggling the ball a little bit. I thought the Citadel defender was going to take it away. Tired refrain by now, but Malusi, another example of what Clemson has at running back. Top 150 recruit. What is he, fifth, sixth on the running back depth chart? Yeah. We mentioned earlier that Dambo was not happy with the performance of his second-string offensive line last week. The second-team offense and third-string offense in this second half against Citadel has not executed up to the Clemson standard. They're heading into a bye week next week. I would imagine practice will ramp up quite a bit this week. Fourth down coming up, and Clemson will be forced to punt with Will Spires. Now, the flip side of that argument, the first stringers, when they played in the first half, put up 49 points. Right, and I think with that type of start, and we, we talk about the depth and the talent of this roster, the expectation is that, okay, maybe you don't score on every drive, but we got to score some points with our twos and threes in the second half. And this one downed inside the 25. A little more than 11 minutes to play. Clemson on its way to yet another September victory. They've won 23 straight in the month of September. They allowed Jameer Gibbs. Back-to-back nine-win seasons. 
New quarterback in for the Citadel. It's Jalen Adams who also doubles as the kick returner. Yeah, I think he's going to be a guy that will upgrade their athleticism. Brandon Rainey's been a good facilitator in this offense. He's been a solid runner, but he's maybe not that dynamic player that you'd want to have to where the defense says, okay, we got to treat this quarterback like a true halfback, a true tailback that could create some real problems as a ball carrier. And maybe Adams becomes that guy, just a sophomore. Today, Pittsburgh with a 21-10 win against Syracuse. You're a big fan of what Pitt can do this season. I just like that defense that, that Coach Narduzzi's got. And Kenny Pickett finally looks like he's the guy we've kind of been waiting for him to be each and every week. When you're stingy on defense, you got solid quarterback play, you've got a chance. Miami and Louisville tonight on ABC. Wake, NC State, a primetime game on ACC Network. Adams moving the pocket, throws incomplete. And it'll bring up third down. De'Eric King from Miami. The Hurricanes have not had a quarterback like that. Right. Ever? Oh, there's no question. You have no question. And I, listen, I think because of that, they've really got to lean on him some more. Whether it's, you know, as a designated runner, not just the plays that he creates when things break down. We know he can do that. We know he, he can pull a rabbit out of the hat. He needs to improve his accuracy in the passing game. So let's see the improvement from week one to week two. It's going to be a fun one tonight. Adams will try to keep this drive alive on third and long. Nowhere to go. Escapes the ambush. Got a block on the edge, and Jalen Adams using his feet. And that's the best play the Citadel has had all day. It is, and that's kind of the point I was getting at with the comparison to the starter, Brandon Rainey. That's likely a sack. So he brings kind of an electrifying presence when things aren't ideal because he can evade, as you see here, and turn a potential negative into a positive. It looked like Greg Williams had him in the backfield, and Adams, 5'10", 165 pounds, slipping away. Adams steps up, has room to run, and just brings a different element to the offense with a nice pickup, seven there, second and three. Yeah, I think they've got to come up with a way to get him on the field. Even if they're going to if they're gonna have Brandon Rainey as their starter, who started a lot of games for them, he gives them a spark. So get him in the A-back position, either one of them, so that they can maybe upgrade some of their explosiveness on offense. Adams, prior to today, had not attempted a pass or a rush. And flags down. Ball starts. Offense number 27. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Context important here, too. Clemson has uh, gone deep in its defensive depth chart at this point. <laughs> yes, they have. But listen, understand it, Coach. Coaches across America understand now that we don't have to worry about the four-game rule. We don't have to worry about whether we need to be cognizant of snaps and who's going in the game and yeah. who's coming out with the extra year of eligibility. So it's really going to give them an opportunity to develop their roster. And Anish, to your point about the depth that's playing right now, likely in practice, your first and second string guys were the guys that were going to get most of the option work throughout the week. These guys are putting up an admirable effort. These third, these four stringers are putting up an incredible effort to defend the option when likely they weren't the ones running against the show team doing it in practice. Adams again, tripped up, stays on his feet, picks up positive yards, and it sets up fourth and three. A lot of good early from Clemson, especially when the starters were in. 
which is not really a surprise, but if we're going to nitpick, and that's what we're doing, where are we nitpicking Clemson? I think we're nitpicking Clemson in the number twos in their offensive line. Not that they're not talented, but they're so young and inexperienced that they cannot afford injuries to their front line guys. Here is Derek Hampton and picks up a yard. Hampton, a redshirt sophomore, was trying to get out of the red. It's a turnover on downs. He came into this game with negative five career rushing yards. <laughs> Down to negative four. There's still time, though. Seven minutes and ten seconds left for Hampton to get on the plus side. Jordan Cornett here with your Fansville Studio update. UCF Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech keeping this tight. A one-possession game, then Otis Anderson punches it in. UCF leads by two scores, 35-21. Georgia Tech with the ball, mid-fourth quarter. Back to you guys, Anisha Tom. All right, Jordan, Jeff Collins trying to get that thing rolling after a week one win against Florida State. New quarterback for Clemson, the fourth stringer, the walk-on, Hunter Helms. I, I got to give Jeff Collins a lot of credit because I, I believe as Georgia Tech fans, the number one thing that you just want to see is improvement from last year to, to this year given the overhaul on the roster. And it's very clear that they've hit on a quarterback. I, I think that young man in Jeff Sims is going to be a future star. And their roster is improved. Gain of three by Drew Sweeney. Dabo's kid on first down. There is Kobe Pace, and you got a glimpse there of the James Davis comparisons, yes. but a flag at the couple of yards behind the line of scrimmage. Again, Bowman and Pace, a couple of freshmen. Mm -hmm. Dabo says this could be fuller davis version 2.0 and sure uh, you know fourth and fifth string running backs at best right now yeah it, but they're they're different styles of backs and you know i think that for for as productive and as how unique travis Etienne is these two guys kind of give you a little more shake and bake and maybe a little bit more in space helms checks down to pace and he is dropped behind the line of scrimmage third down Hunter Helms the fourth string quarterback a true freshman walk on who chose Clemson over scholarship offers from South Florida Troy Holy Cross and others now they've lost some QBs you know over the years sure. which is which is normal when you have Watson and Trevor Lawrence there's really not room uh, <laughs> For someone to get their turn. Kelly Bryan transferred to Missouri. Chase Bryce now at Duke. Zarek Cooper's actually had a pretty nice career in the FCS with Jacksonville State. Yep. And Hunter Johnson at Northwestern. And Helms thrown to the ground. And Will Spires will come on with the punting unit. Beverly, the safety with the sack. And I mean, you could celebrate, I guess, but scoreboard, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Listen. you're out there making plays against the number one team in the country. <laughs> At this point, you could celebrate and have some fun with I it. I guess. I think there's always room for enthusiasm in this game. You never want to let that wane. Hey, if this was an ACC ACC matchup though, and a guy did that, he would be going. He would be going to the sideline for a mouthful. I guarantee you. <laughs> well, you know, I guess you come in as a big underdog. You come up with a sack, right? It's going to go on the highlight reel. You got to have a little extra to it. So, yep. Free pass. Spires punt lands inside the 15. It'll be Bulldogs ball down 49 0. Not insignificant to some, the score. ACC Network primetime, Wake Forest, NC State, 8 p.m. tonight. Devin Larry getting the start for the Wolfpack. Wake trying to bounce back from that season opening loss to Clemson. Last year, Wake beat NC State, mm -hmm. beat Duke, and they beat UNC. You know, when you have a quarterback like Jamie Newman, yeah, and you've got a big-time playmaker in Sage Sherratt, now you don't have either of those two. 
You're kind of having to start from scratch. Even though Sam Hartman, I think, is a good player. And he got to play as a true freshman two years ago. And having that experience is going to give them a foundation to build around him. Newman transferred to Georgia and then opted out. Yep. He's really talented if you haven't had a chance to see him. Adams under pressure and sacked. Another one of those freshman defensive linemen, Demonte Capehart. Dabo Sweeney imported the number one recruiting class in the country. And truth be told, right now, they're down three defensive linemen who would be in the rotation. A couple of guys that could be starting and Justin Foster mm -hmm. and Tyler Davis. Let's not forget about Xavier Thomas. Thomas right. He would be a starter, former five-star. Originally, he was going to redshirt because of COVID and strep throat. He may come back now in the second half of the season. You know what's interesting is, and I pointed this out in the college football national championship remember when they had didn't have dexter lawrence did anybody notice no okay did you notice last week against wake forest that they didn't have xavier thomas no <laughs> so it just further illustrates where this program is in terms of talent and depth and we kept talking about how big for z and murphy are k part himself 65 305 is a true freshman <laughs> <laughs> Citadel fans watching saying, yeah, we, we get it. <laughs> Third yeah. down. Enough. It was interesting, though, because for a while, when Vic Beasley and Grady Jarrett would leave, or Shaq Lawson would leave, or after Wilkins, Lawrence, Bryant Farrell, when they departed, now the big question, how does Clemson replace and replenish its defensive line? What you've seen in the second half is a big hint because they play their twos, not just against FCS yeah. teams. They get them in for meaningful snaps and meaningful series against almost everybody. Late option pitch, and it's Hampton, who's now going to get on the plus side in terms of career yards, and he's got a first down. But those valuable reps add up. So when they enter their junior or senior year and they're listed as first-time starters, they've got a lot of reps under their belt. Well, they and do. real reps. Yeah, exactly. And they might be threes and fours now. You're going to see a, actually a well-executed option play here. Jalen Adams, a late pitch, accurate pitch. Kind of what Citadel was hoping to get to early and be able to sustain some drives. Just overwhelmed today. It's going to be interesting moving forward, too, with the Citadel. And I, and I know these are late reps against the backups, but Jalen Adams has come in and made some explosive plays for them with two games left in this short four-game season for them. Do they put Jalen Adams in for maybe some packages, get him some reps, see what they have in their redshirt sophomore backup quarterback? That's something we may see. I think you have to, and you're going to get back to playing FCS level of competition. We've got Eastern Kentucky coming up next week, so it gives you a chance to, for the playing field to be leveled a bit more, give you a chance to have confidence, but there's no doubt he's he's lit a fire to this offense and, and brings a different dimension. Adams under pressure and crunched. Might have lost a yard, third down. The Citadel still looking for its first touchdown of the season. And some folks watching out there wondering... Uh, if the Bulldogs will get it, because it, it is important to some people out there. <laughs> Absolutely it is. They've got Eastern Kentucky next week, the lone home game in this fall slate, and then the fall season concludes with Army. May not see a single pass in that game against Army. You may not. That's exactly right. Adams, option left. Keeps. And it sets up fourth down, about two. The last time Clemson lost a game in the month of September, you got to go back to September 20th, 2014. Big primetime event with Florida State in town. Or rather, that was in Tallahassee against Florida State. They lose in overtime. And you know what happened the next week? You and I were here, and Deshaun Watson made his first career start. And that's a point of demarcation for this program. It absolutely has been, as we see Jalen Adams taking off again and extending plays. And I can remember vividly 
having grown up around Marshall Falk and seeing him. And back in 1991, he rushed for 386 yards and seven touchdowns as a true freshman. Now, in 1991, true freshman didn't play, all right? And I remember standing on the sideline. I remember where I was. I was on the far side 20 right over there. And I said to you guys on our broadcast, I said, this is the single best true freshman performance of any player I've seen in college football since Marshall Falk. That's how good Deshaun Watson was on that day. Something like six touchdown passes, a yep. couple of school records. Yikes. That looked like Capehart. Yep. So Clemson about to make it 24 straight in September. This would be their 31st straight regular season win. That would be a new ACC record. Florida State also won 30 straight regular season games from 2013 to 2015. And oh, by the way, Clemson on its way to winning its 45th consecutive game on Saturday. Adams to midfield, and that'll do it. The Tigers pitch a shutout. Fans are going to have to stay in their seats. It used to be when a Clemson game ended, the fans would gather and congregate at the paw at the 50-yard line, but in this climate, fans will watch. The team shake hands. Trevor Lawrence, mighty impressive. We saw some of the backups come in, play well. Frank Ladson flashed as well. He absolutely did. And what, what Dabo and his staff wanted to see is are we going to be better in week two than we were in week one? I think the answer is yes. A bye week coming for Clemson. Then it's Virginia and a rematch of last year's ACC championship.